Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to English Cafe. And this is Mamta again with today's vocabulary live session. So please join me and let's discuss some new words, phrases, and expressions from today's newspaper headlines. Please join me for the session and we will get started. And as you join the session, please drop me a hi um, so that I know that you are here and you have joined the live session. Do drop me a hi in the comments. All right, so to begin with, the words that we are going to discuss today are from different pages, like from the headlines on diff of different pages of the Hindu newspaper. Today is the Hindu newspaper. So this, uh, these are headlines from uh, various sections in today's newspaper. So we'll learn some. Uh, very nice words, expressions, and uh, phrases. We'll learn their meaning. We'll learn how to use these expressions in sentences. So that's what we're going to do. Let me see if some of you have joined. Oh, Renu is on time. Great. Hi, Renu. Welcome to the session. Thank you for joining. Each one of you who is here, can you just write me a hi, drop me a hi to tell me that you are here? And if you are attending this session, I would suggest that you have a pen and a paper handy so that you can write down the words, write down their meanings, write down the examples, because a lot of participants uh, make a lot of examples, a lot of sentences during the live session. So you can learn from other people's examples and uh, you can review those words and phrases later so that you can actually uh, expand your vocabulary apart from that um, please participate if you are here in this session trying to learn some new vocabulary please participate during the session write your sentences in the comments and if there is any feedback I'll always share it with you so that way you can you know if you are using the words correctly or not so that can be very very helpful for you and uh, the last thing, please share this live video. Go ahead, take a moment and share this video with your friends. Share it on your wall so that they can also learn some new vocabulary. And if you're a student at English Cafe, I hope you are enjoying your classes. I hope you are having a great learning experience. Do let me know how your experience of learning English at English Cafe has been. Let me know in the comments. Now let's get started with today's uh, vocabulary. So the first headline that I have from today's uh, newspaper, it is about rain and it is about so much rain in the last couple of weeks. So it says, uh, record rain creates mayhem as delhi streets turn into rivers i hope you can see it on your screen so there's been record rain i mean we've had so much rain in the last two weeks in delhi which usually doesn't happen but this time we have so much rain in delhi and this rain that's too much rain it has created mayhem in delhi streets so the word we will discuss first is mayhem and then we will discuss the phrasal verb turn into. So tell me what the word mayhem means. You can see the pictures on your screen and uh, you can uh, also read the headline. What do you think the word mayhem means? Please let me know in the comments. Oh, Aarti says hi. Hi, Aarti. Thank you for joining. All of you who are live have joined. Welcome to the session, guys. Do drop me a hi if you're there. So tell me what the word mayhem means okay comfort kusi hi comfort thank you for joining and welcome to the session so mayhem is the word that we will discuss so a mayhem is a situation which is out of control or which is you know which is very difficult to control so an out of control situation is a mayhem like mayhem in delhi due to excess rains since it has rained so much and it usually doesn't rain this much in delhi so uh, we don't know how to handle such heavy rainfall and uh, a lot of rainfall 
over such a short period of time has caused a lot of water logging and the with streets filled with water, the blocked roads, etc. A lot of other problems. So that's mayhem. Mayhem is a situation that is out of control, that is very difficult to control. So that's mayhem. For example, we can say that uh, what's happening in Afghanistan right now, like uh, the US forces have withdrawn and uh, Taliban is taking over. So the situation in Afghanistan right now is a complete mayhem. We can say that, right? So that's how you can use the word mayhem. Now it's your turn to tell me how you're going to use it. The spelling, as you can see on your screen, it is M-A-Y-H-E-M. -E and the pronunciation is mayhem. And I hope you are paying attention while you attend this session. Uh, because at the end, I'll ask you if you are able to recall the meanings of these words. So a mayhem is a situation that is out of control, that is difficult to control. Your turn to use it in a sentence. Please let me know how you're going to use it. Okay, some new people. Uh, Kartar has joined. Hi, Kartar. Thank you for joining the session. Um, please tell me how you're going to use the word mayhem in a sentence. Let me know in the comments, please. Because what ultimately matters is if you are able to use these words while you communicate with people. So what will you call a mayhem or where can you use this word in a sentence? Please let me know quickly. Okay, Chaudhary Muhammad Vakas says, hello ma'am, how are you? Um, hi Vakas, I'm doing great. I hope you're good too. Aarti says, Mumbai local train is a mayhem. Great example, Aarti, right. That's what Mumbai local trains are known for. Rajinder says, hi. Hi, Rajinder. Thank you for joining and welcome to the session. Renu says, on 26th January, the tractor rally of farmers became a mayhem. Absolutely, because it all went out of control. So it was a mayhem. Wonderful examples. Please share some more examples with me. And until then, I would like to discuss the next expression in this uh, headline that is turn into something. So, this headline says the streets of Delhi have turned into rivers. So, what does that mean? If something turns into something else, what does that mean? Let's discuss it. So if something turns into some other thing, that means it changes and becomes that thing, right? It changes and becomes that thing. Sometimes literally, sometimes just figuratively, not literally. So to turn into something means to change and become that thing. For example, here we're saying the streets turned into rivers. Uh, it's not like they turned into, they changed into rivers forever, but it did happen. River is like rivers of a lot of water. So that's what happened on the streets of Delhi. So they're saying that Delhi streets turned into river. Or uh, uh, for example, um, for example, we can again talk about Afghanistan and say that, you know, Afghanistan has turned into uh, uh has turned into a mayhem right now the situation in afghanistan because earlier it was peaceful but now it has changed into something that's chaotic and out of control so it has turned into a mayhem or uh, or uh, you know these days indian uh, indian parliament has turned into a circus so turned into a circus means it has kind of become a circus not literally but just figuratively, not literally. So when we are criticizing, we can use this statement. It has turned into a circus. Or, um, you know, he has turned into a fine young man. So turned into a fine young man, that means he has actually become a great person. So that's how you can use the expression turn into something. Okay. Or why have you turned into such an, uh, you know, such a rude person? So why have you turned into such a rude person means why have you become such a rude person? Now it's your turn to use the expression turn into something in a sentence. 
please use it and let me know. I have given you plenty of examples. Okay. Uh, uh, all right. Yeah, you pronounced it correct. Ameham. Yeah, thank you for correcting yourself, Reno. Good. So now, please tell me how you can use the word turn into. Turn into. How are you going to use this? It's a phrasal verb, actually. So turn can be used in all the forms. Turn, turned, turned. Or turning. Or turns, etc. So turn into. Now, until I get your examples, I would like to go ahead and talk about another headline from today's newspaper that says, man bludgeoned to death over remark on cooking and one person was held. I hope you can see it on your computer screen. It says, man bludgeoned to death over remark on cooking. So let's talk about it. There was a, it this news is about Delhi, this happened somewhere in Delhi, the capital of India. So there was this guy, a 48-year-old man, who was bludgeoned to death. Let's discuss the word bludgeon. And then we will also discuss the expression to death. Let's talk about bludgeon first of all. So to bludgeon someone means to uh, hit that person repeatedly, to attack that person repeatedly with a heavy uh, object or with a heavy weapon so if if you hit somebody with a heavy object with a heavy weapon repeatedly again and again and again that means you are bludgeoning that person so bludgeon is a verb here we say he was bludgeoned to death to death means he was he was attacked he was hit again and again and again until he died. That's what the expression to death means, right? So bludgeoned to death means attacked until he died. We can use the expression to death uh, with other forms of attack as well, like stabbed to death. For example, he was stabbed to death. That means somebody stabbed the shot to death. Or to, to shoot somebody to death that means to shoot that person maybe multiple times or shoot that person in a way that the person dies so shoot to death bludgeon to death stab to death etc so to death means to do something to that person until they actually die until they are not alive so that's how you can use the expression to death so i would like you guys to first of all use the expression bludgeon bludgeon is a verb so use it in all the forms, bludgeoned, bludgeoned, bludgeoned. And then also use to death, like stabbed to death or shot to death or bludgeoned to death, etc. Uh, let me know how you're going to use these two expressions in the comments right now. And let me see if I have any unread comments. Okay, I have one from Arthi that says, my friend has turned into a cook, okay, into a chef maybe, or a cook, yeah. Okay, Shubhajit says, if we do not obey COVID guidelines, then it will create a mayhem. Absolutely. And it did create a mayhem last, no, not last year, earlier this year. It did create a mayhem-like situation in our country. Um, Sagar says, thanks. Thank you for joining the session, Sagar, and welcome. Please learn some new words today. Renu says, in the morning when the sun golden rays fall on the eyes of the mountain it turns into golden color wow that's beautiful yes that happens Renu. great now guys i also asked you to use the word bludgeon can you use bludgeon bludgeon means the spelling b l sorry yeah b l u d g e o n bludgeon means to attack somebody repeatedly with a heavy weapon with a heavy object. So bludgeon and to death, like stab to death or shoot to death or bludgeon to death. That means keep doing that action until the person dies. Please use both these expressions. Okay, Rajendra says, Disha case accused were bludgeoned to death. All right, good example. Share more examples, guys. Please share examples. And right now, 
uh, until I get your examples, I would like to go ahead and talk about another headline from today's newspaper. It is about the state of Telangana, and it says, Telangana walks out of KRMB meeting. That's what it says. So we will discuss the expression to walk out. We all know walk. We walk all the time. But what does it mean if we say somebody walked out of a meeting, for example? So there was this meeting to be held in Telangana. Uh, meeting to be held. It was, uh, it was some... Um, uh, related to Krishna River, actually. So Krishna River is a river that flows in southern India. So there was this meeting uh, about, uh, I think, conservation of the river. So the state of Telangana walked out of that meeting. So to walk out of something means to leave it when you are angry about something or upset about something or with someone. So they walked out of meeting means they left the meeting because they were uh, upset about something, they were angry about something. So that is walk out. To walk out of a meeting, to walk out of a conference, to walk out of an event means you leave that event because you are angry at something or you are not happy with something. So walk out. We can also use it uh, like we can say he walked out on his wife and children. So he walked out. On his wife and children means he left them or maybe he abandoned them. So walk out. How are you going to use it? Or for example, I walked out of my cousin's wedding after uh, his friends humiliated me. So I walked out of the meeting uh, of the wedding means I left the meeting because I was upset or I was offended. So please use the expression walk out of something, walk out in a sentence. And let me see if I have any unread comments. Okay, I have one from Jahangir. Hi, Jahangir. Thank you for joining and welcome to the session. Shubhajit says, in this pathetic situation, many students turn into laborers. Yeah, many students have turned into laborers. You can say that. Renu says, on the Indochina border, our army bludgeoned Chinese army. Yeah. So bludgeoned Chinese army. Did that happen, Renu? I don't know about it. So that was the, the last one that we discussed was to walk out of something. How are you going to use it? Walk out of an event, walk out of a meeting, etc. Please use it in a sentence. Let me know in comments. Until then, I'll read another headline and we'll discuss those words. Here they are. So it says, National monetization pipeline will lead to layoffs. This is a this is a statement that's made by uh, the Congress leader Sachin Pilot. So we know that Sachin Pilot is Indian National Congress leader. He says that national monetization pipeline will lead to layoffs. So uh, we have been talking about this uh, monetization policy now for a few days. Uh, in our country but what mr sachin pilot says is that if we if we implement this then it will lead to layoff let's talk about the expression lead to and then layoff in fact first of all let's talk about layoff uh, a layoff is when um, um, a layoff is when a lot of people are actually terminated from their employment Usually not because of their performance. It has nothing to do with their performance, but due to other reasons. Like when there is recession, many companies lay off their people because they want to cut down on their costs. Or if, uh, if a company is downsizing or if they're, going through, uh, if they're going through losses, they have to lay off their manpower. They have to lay off people so that they can survive, right? So that is a layoff. Um, layoffs are unpleasant, but businesses have to make that decision, right? So layoff. The other expression here is lead to something. Like here they say that, you know, if we implement this, it will lead to layoffs. That means it will lead to job losses. A lot of people will lose their jobs. So lead to. If something leads to something, that means it actually causes that thing, right? For example, uh, 
for example smoking what to say chain smoking can lead to cancer over a period of time isn't it so chain smoke chain smoking can lead to cancer means chain smoking can cause cancer right or uh, uh, like eating a lot of junk food and not exercising leads to diabetes or leads to obesity so obesity diabetes are caused by not working out and eating a lot of junk food so if something leads to something else that means it causes that thing i hope you got that so please let me know how you will use the word lay off i'm sure you've heard of lay off in the recent past or in the past where a company laid off its employees so lay is a verb so you will use it in all the forms lay laid laid l a i d in the past so laid off like the company laid off hundreds of its employees now it's your turn to use it in a sentence and also how will you use the expression lead to let me see if i have uh, any unread comments okay i do renu says in the lok sabha many times congress leaders walked out yes that keeps happening people do walk out in our parliament rajendra says opposition leaders walked out of discussions against snooping <laughs> right rina says if a vampire bites a human the person turns into a vampire <laughs> yeah absolutely that happens okay um all right great so let's move on and let's discuss another example here it's about what's happening in afghanistan right now it says in panjshir anti taliban forces repulse attacks let's talk about it so anti taliban forces repulse attacks let's discuss the word repulse what does it mean so to repulse something means to um, to push it away or to prevent an attack so that is repulse or if something is repulsive that means you know you don't like it because it's unpleasant so repulsive but here this headline says that uh, that the anti taliban forces repulsed the attacks so as we know that uh, the taliban have not yet captured the panjshir area in afghanistan i'm sure they're trying to you know they're trying to capture it and there's a struggle going on uh, internally but the anti taliban forces within afghanistan successfully pushed the attacks back or successfully uh, you know uh, dealt with the attacks so that is repulse repulse means to push push someone back or to prevent an attack that is a repulse if somebody is repulsive that means you don't like that person so repulse if somebody has a repulsive personality you don't like that person so please use the word repulse in a sentence let me know how you're going to use it okay i have some um, comments to read rinat says oh no rajendra says sedentary lifestyle leads to obesity right okay rinat says driving while you are drunk will lead to crash correct now repulse please use the word repulse in a sentence until then i'll move on and talk about another headline from today's newspaper it says beijing rolls out new data law let's talk about roll out what does it mean if we roll something out or if someone rolls something out what does that mean to roll out something means to introduce it to the you know to introduce it to everybody for the first time to introduce something new that is to roll out so roll out a new plan roll out a new law roll out a new policy etc that's how it can be used in this uh, in this example in this headline it says that beijing has a new data law which they have rolled out that means they have introduced it to everybody what their new data law is now please let me know how you're going to use it in a sentence and the next headline that we have is 
it says there is always room for improvement says arun so mr b arun is uh, actually a coach i think he is a cricket coach and he has said that there is always room for improvement so he he was actually defending team india's performance in the recent uh, match so he says there is there is always room for improvement we will discuss the expression room for something what does it mean if we say that there is room for improvement or room for negotiations or uh, you know uh, room for no room for fighting for example so what does it mean if there is a room for something that means there is a possibility for that thing like a room for improvement means there is possibility there is scope there is time for improvement so if there is room for something that means there is possibility of something for example a room for improvement means a possibility for improvement um a room for example a room for negotiation like we can say there is no room for negotiation if we say there is no room for negotiation that means there is no possibility of negotiations any longer or uh, uh, there is no room for discussions on this matter any further so there is no room for discussions means there is no possibility of discussions on this matter that is what it means so this was the last expression that we discussed today now uh, please use the expression room for in a sentence and let me know how you're going to use it and until then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you through all the words that we have discussed so far the first word that we discussed today was mayhem a mayhem is a situation that's out of control the second one is turn into something if something turns into something else that means it changes and becomes that thing the third one was bludgeon to bludgeon somebody means to attack that person again and again with a heavy object with a heavy weapon and to death means to do something to somebody that causes their death like stab to death bludgeon to death shoot to death etc next one was to walk out to walk out of something to walk out means to leave it because you are angry another uh, word was lead to something if something leads to something else that means it causes that thing next one was lay off lay off is um, Uh, lay off means uh, terminating someone's employment the next one was repulse to repulse means to uh, push someone back or to uh, actually um, to successfully prevent an attack that is repulse number 6 was roll out to roll out means to introduce something new to everyone to the world etc number 7 was room for something room for something means a possibility for that thing like a room for improvement or a room for discussion or room for negotiations etc so do let me know uh, which were the new words that you learned today and did you learn the use of these words let me check if i have an, any unread comments until then okay i have a comment from rajinder he says half truth leads to mediocre things right Rina says iPhone first time was rolled out in 2008 great example Rajendra says if we want to live together happy there is no room for complacency great example Rajendra okay and okay Rajendra says the the words were mayhem bludgeon walk out lead to repulse roll out room for something wonderful Rajendra and i really appreciate that you actually remember or you attend the session so sincerely so thank you for that and guys i hope you learned some new words today if you joined us for the first time let me tell you that we conduct this live session at 4 pm every day it's 4 pm indian time every day so you can join us and learn around 10 new words phrases and expressions from daily newspaper headlines and we discuss advanced english words and phrases that can actually go a long way in helping you 
expand and develop your vocabulary imagine if you learn 10 words every day and even if you uh, like if if you end up learning 50 new words and phrases every week that could be like 200 words and phrases in a month and actually a lot of new words and phrases over a period of time so please join every day so that you can learn new vocabulary and do let me know how you like this session and uh, uh, also please let me know what is it that you would like to learn so that we can plan our sessions accordingly and we can come up with new sessions please let me know in the comments what is it that you would like to learn and that's all from me for today's session but before i go uh, let me tell you that at english cafe we also offer online courses to help you um, to help you practice your spoken english to practice your speaking skills in english so if that's something you want like if you want to develop fluency in english you will need to practice right and uh, that's what you can do with us we have courses to help you practice english every day with a trainer where you get your feedback every day you are guided by the trainer you end up learning new words phrases you end up developing more confidence because you develop you communicate in english every day and over a period of time you become more confident more fluent and correct while speaking in english so if that's something you're looking for please join a course you can get in touch with us to know the details and for vocabulary join us every day at 4 pm okay um thank you for the feedback rina says i enjoyed thank you very much great um thank you thank you for that feedback so guys Let's meet again tomorrow with another vocabulary live lesson. Until then, please take care and keep learning. Bye-bye.